Today we're going over boiler zone controls and specifically today we're going over the six zone switching relay by Taiko. And a switching relay controls each one of the boiler zones by powering an individual circulating pump for each zone. So that differs from a zone valve control system where you're individually powering zone valves. And a zone valve looks like this where you have control to the opening or closing of a tube in order to control flow to that zone. And so a zone valve control system may only have one circulating pump where a switching relay control has individual circulating pumps for each zone. The other thing I wanted to point out is we have these wires connecting over to the circulating pumps to keep everything close so that you can see, but typically you're gonna be wiring these in with MC. So this is metallic clad and that's shielded power lines that are basically gonna be installed in a residential building or a commercial building, you have to have this shielded since it's high voltage. In this case, I just have it wired like this so I can kind of push everything together and so you can see it. We have zone one wired into our thermostat. We have zone two just with the two wires sticking out and we have zone six going over to a aquastat and this represents the thermostat for an indirect hot water heating tank that would be for the domestic water and that will be over next to the boiler and so I have this disconnected because this would be powered all the time right now because I can't turn this aquastat down low enough to have it open up the electrical circuit but how this simply works is we're going to power this right over here at our 120 VAC input and I'm going to show you what happens? We have zone one with this circulating pump, zone two with this circulating pump, zone six right here, and let me turn this on for you. A thermostat simply connects two wires. So as you can see, I had those two wires touching, and you want to also look over here at this little LED light. You can see our red light right there, and you'd see that shining through the cover. So you'd see zone two is being powered. And so that's the same thing that happens over here. It's just the two wires connect. So you have R and W connect. And if we wanted to turn on zone one and zone two, we can just connect both of them just like that. So you can see our little impeller is spinning. I actually took this off from the, the cast iron assembly so that you can see it. Now let me also show you what happens here. Zone six. As you could tell, this circulating pump was very loud. It's about on its way out. It's gonna fail soon. But as you saw, we had zone six, zone two, and zone one all calling for heat to turn on. And therefore we had power at zone one, zone two, and zone six to power each one of these circulating pumps. If you have a indirect hot water heater tank, you're gonna to wanna to have this on the on position because that's gonna make sure that the indirect hot water heater tank gets satisfied first because you have to have higher temperature water circulating to the indirect water heater tank in order to meet the temperature uh, demand for that tank. So you can have a lower temperature water heading to the radiators in the house, but you really need to have this indirect hot water heater tank uh, satisfied first. Otherwise, potentially, you're not gonna be able to catch up with, with your heating for all your zones and that tank. And basically, uh, you're never gonna have a high enough water temperature to satisfy this. So anyway, so what's gonna happen here is you're gonna hear a loud noise because this circulating pump's gonna uh, be running, but I want you to notice what happens when we try to call for our zone two to turn on. So as you can see, after this is satisfied by just jumping from here to here, then we can have our zone one and zone two on. And I just wanna show you this so we can, we can check it out. So 124 volts, 124 volts, and then on zone six, we've got nothing. So uh, another thing I wanna tell you is this isolated end switch. Uh, so this gets connected to the TT on the boiler aquastat 
and so that's on that that main control of the uh, of the boiler. This is typically used for cold start boilers, and so that means that the boiler may not hold or maintain a high temperature. Uh, it's going to basically turn on when you have a zone being being called, uh, and then it's going to ignite the the fuel gas or the oil in order to raise the temperature, but. An isolated end switch is just going to close when you have a, say, zone one or zone two being powered. So I'm going to disconnect this and just show you that. We'll turn our power off first. We're turning our multimeter on to electrical resistance. We have our power back on to our board. And let's turn this thermostat right here up. So as you can see, we're reading very close to 0, 0.0 ohms of electrical resistance. So we should have 0.0, .0 when we touch our probes together. So right there. So we had, say, 0.1. Now let's see what happens when we are not calling on zone 1. You can see we read OL. And that's the same thing as when we just have the probes in the air and they are not touching. So OL means open line and 0, 0.0 ohms of electrical resistance means that the contacts are closed. So that's the purpose of an end switch. It's going to stay open until one of the zones is calling and then it's going to close when the zones are calling for heat to turn on. So the next thing I want to show you is down here on the ZC and the ZR that is for the ignition for a, a boiler. There's also going to be your high temperature limit switch there. I'm going to turn the power off now, and I just want to show you what's going to happen here. Power's off. We're going to disconnect our jumper between ZC and ZR. If your boiler has a ZC and ZR terminal, then you can just wire each one of these individual terminals to those terminals on the boiler. So. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the power back on. I'm going to call for zone one to turn on. I'm going to switch our multimeter back over to voltage so you can see our sine wave there. That's for alternating current. And so I want to also point out that between R and W, we're measuring 30 volts. And that means that there's a potential difference between those two terminals. But when I turn this on, you see that there's basically no potential difference. And that means that that switch is closed. So that's how you can measure that. So you have 30 volts between those two because inside the thermostat, it's separated just like this is. And so I want you to also now watch this relay right here. It's sucked in. Let's just go between our ZR and ground. And you see that we're measuring 124 volts. If we come over to ZC, we have no volts. And so you also are noticing that over here on zone one, we don't have any voltage. And that's because our ZC and ZR is, is not jumped. And so I'm gonna jump it real quick. Now we have power to our circulating pump. So 124 volts. So you can hear, hear this one running right here. So if you have a high temperature limit that opens up, it's going to shut off both the ignition and also the ability to run the circulating pumps. So if you do not have a ZC and a ZR terminal on your boiler, then you're just gonna leave this jumper in place. I also wanna point out that on this board, we have a 24 volt uh, section right here where you can power a low load, so not something that is excessive, but something uh, that is small because you can see that this transformer is not very large. It does not have that many uh, VA, so it's, it's not rated for, for that much uh, power being delivered. On the inside, you have your instructions for your wiring, and so you have a cold start boiler, you've got a tankless boiler, and it also is going to uh, discuss the powering of a a uh, power stealing thermostat, which you can come from the common right here with a little resistor and attach that over to the W, and that's going to allow you to power a uh, power stealing thermostat, such as a Nest thermostat. And so you can see on our multimeter, we're measuring 
and we even have power there even when the thermostat uh, is off so that no zones are calling and we still have just dedicated 24 volts there you can't put a large load on that because this is a small VA transformer it's basically only there to uh, power each of these little relays in these black boxes right there so anytime that you have 24 volts present on the W over here for a zone it is going to be supplying power to this little relay inside this black box and the fuse is there to protect in case there's say like a direct short over here in the circulating pump. Uh, if that fuse blows, then it's not gonna allow that uh, circulating pump to, be, to run. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and examine that next. So how we test a fuse is you can come right over here to the ground, you can take the other probe and come on one side of the fuse and you see that we have 124 volts present. And then on the other side, you have 124 volts. If that fuse was blown, you would have 124 volts on one side and zero volts on the other side. And so that fuse is intact. And so you can see there's a fuse for each relay right there. And you typically are going to have extra fuses in here just in case there's some problem. Say during the initial installation, you can still stick that fuse right in there with the power off. You gotta make sure that the power's off anytime you're gonna be touching that. So if you don't have 24 volts here, and, and it may not be exactly 24, but it's really gonna be somewhere between 26 and 30 volts you see we have 30 volts right now what you can do is you can check your uh, transformer right here and so we can check right in the back of this plug and so this is our secondary side so that is our 24 volts so we got 30 volts there and so you can see that it is outputting uh, if we don't have 24 volts there we could see hey do we have 120 volts over here and so you see we have 124 volts here and so you want to make sure that you have power, so your LED status light is on, signaling that you do have power over here on your input. And if you wanna diagnose this transformer by itself, you're gonna turn the power off, and then we're gonna measure with electrical resistance. So you don't wanna put your probes really fully in, you just wanna insert them a little bit, because you don't wanna damage this. You see 3.6 ohms. If you read OL here, then you would know that your coil is opened up. You would also uh, notice a bad smell as well, a burnt smell. Over here on the high voltage side, we have 104 ohms. So that's really how it works. You just wanna look around and see if you, you smell any burn marks, you have any fuses blown, you wanna check for power at your transformer, then it's a matter of making sure your thermostat is connected in order to uh, make sure that you are powering a zone if you want to bypass a thermostat what you can do is you can just take alligator jumpers just like this and you can just jump from your r to your w if you want to call a specific zone to turn on over here anyway you're going to have this cover put on when you're done and you're going to be able to see your led status lights uh, so you're going to be able to determine the operation at that point in time and so if you're looking for more information on the zone valve control system. I have a whole nother video on that link down in the description section below. I've also got some videos on uh, Honeywell and Taco zone valves, so you can make sure you check those out. And we also have a bunch of free resources over at our website over at acservicetech.com, such as articles, quick tips, calculators, and quizzes. And we also have our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. So I hope all this helps, and I hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.